I'm a mum, I should be at home right now making my kids clean their bedrooms. But I'm here doing something else because of a monumental trade agreement that should not be negotiated in secret. The TPPA concerns 792 million people and accounts for 40% of the world economy, yet our mainstream media is barely covering it and the deal's devised behind closed doors. And what it does, at its core, at its very centre, is it allows big business to maintain their profits at the expense of the taxpayer. It is the most disastrous trade deal you have never heard of. Be clear, normal people like you and me in each of these countries involved in this deal are saying the same thing we are saying today. People in these nine, nine, eleven other countries on the Asia Pacific Rim. And from what we understand, the deal has 29 chapters, but only five relate to issues typically thought of as trade. This is not the trade deal of our grandparents' time. Most chapters appear to be trying to remove laws and regulations that restrict the activities of multinational companies. Big business wants less protection of consumers, workers, small investors and the environment because this interferes with profits. This deal is not about swapping wheat for apples. Tim Grosser reckons it's to avoid an ill-informed public debate about the issue, the secrecy. Of course, there's no better way to ensure this than to block public access to information. So, no, pub, no public debate and no parliamentary scrutiny prior to signing, patronising, shameful. Yeah, trade deals used to be negotiated in secret so other countries didn't know what our wheat and apples agreements were. But that's a very small part of this agreement. They're using old tactics to get away with shameful, undemocratic behaviour. Let's talk about how this will affect our environment, our land and our food. The TPPA will have negative long-range impacts. I want my kids and their kids to eat healthy food. We know 83% of Kiwis want GM foods labelled. But, and non-corporate scientists have proven GM food contains allergens and that they have unsafe pesticide residue levels on them. And 99% of GMs approved and released are unhealthy. Yet through the TPPA, the US wants to remove regulations on GMOs and food labelling. And the US lead negotiator is on record saying that the US wants to use the TPP negotiations to promote agricultural biotechnology within the negotiating countries. It's all about utility payments, patents and licensing agreements. It's a license to print money and to follow America's climbing illness statistics. This deal can stop us legislating on the use of genetic engineering technology. It may stop us continuing to prevent GM food being grown here. It may also act to prevent future GM 2.0 technology that is trying to go under the regulatory radar and avoid the hassle of today's GMO regulation management deals. Let's be clear here, no consumers in any country in the world are demanding GM food. It is not and it has never been market led. It is driven by corporations, it's as simple as that. Let's talk about rules that could restrict dangerous additives or toxic residues on our food and land. Investors from signatory countries could sue our government for compensation away from our own justice system in private international tribunals. Last year in Canada, giant US chemical company Dow AgroSciences sued Quebec for banning a dangerous pesticide using a trade deal called NAFTA that does not go nearly as far as the proposals for the TPPA. If future governments 
legislate in a way that would reduce company profits. This TPPA could give these transnational companies within these TPPA agreement countries the increased right to sue future governments. That is called the taxpayer. Just the threat of a long and expensive court case with a rich multinational company can be enough to get governments to back down on environmental protection measures. And this is known as Investor State Dispute Settlement, ISDS, which Ron is talking about. The hesitancy of government is known as a regulatory chill. It makes it more difficult to maintain and protect our environment and our health. Regulatory chill effectively freezes government's decisions that are in our well-being. Many of you may know our government is hesita hesitant to introduce plain cigarette packaging. The threat of dispute of being sued from foreign investors has slowed down our government's very important decision that directly reduces smoking addiction. Eight million dollars US down the drain because that's what arbitration costs. And Mike re referred to the 500 million that the Australia's been sued for. It could affect our farmers and our farmland. The US and its farmers lobby is pushing for all TPPA countries to adopt a more coordinated approach to regulation. We are not a state of the USA. Do you want, we are not. Do you want our farmers to follow a set of rules secretly negotiated overseas? Swimming and drinking water. Under the TPPA, tightening of water quality regulation can open the door to ISDS lawsuits from investors linked to other countries. If it costs more to produce a kilogram of butter, because we have to put in environmental or health-based regulations, it will affect their profit margin. And the consequences for Kiwis living in toxic soil and drinking toxic water, it's not their business. It's the taxpayer who is left with this mess. And if New Zealand were to adopt, for example, for water, the OECD recommendation of pricing agricultural water usage, that decision also could be challenged by investors from the TPPA countries because it costs them money. This is not just about food safety. It's about everything we consume. Water, power, energy, oil and coal. Will my kids look back at my generation with disgust because we never took climate change seriously? The TPPA has the power to affect our efforts at reducing greenhouse gas emissions. For example, if Kiwis want to make future changes to the emissions trading scheme or restrict coal companies, we would risk ISDS litigation because it would affect coal and oil industry profits. That's grounds for dispute people, profits. And the mainstream media, Please, 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 please question how little of the TPPA story you see in the New Zealand Herald and the mainstream media. Ignoring the academics in the Climate and Health Council? I believe there is no independent investigative, journalis investigative journalistic coverage and analysis of the TPPA permitted in New Zealand media today. And our media, our mainstream media is failing ordinary Kiwis. Papers are being released by academics and specialists, but our national newspaper is simply ignoring these professionals. So we need everyone here, we need you to tell the story to everyone you know. Tell people that the academics and professionals who are brave enough to speak out are simply ignored by our mainstream media. Let them investigate the mainstream media shut down. Corporations will naturally do everything they can to protect the profits of their investments because that is their bottom line. Well, my bottom line is my kids' future. And the last I heard it, I still lived in a democracy. And I will not support a deal that allows corporations to maintain their profits at the expense 
of the taxpayer and at the expense of my children because this, will, this deal will ultimately strip us of our quality of life. 